she can stutter and pretend she's Robin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like a wacky morning show, except it's 10 o'clock at yeah. night. Well, that's how wacky it really yeah. is. Make room for Robin, Batman. <laughs> Great. Holy hand slappers, Batman. We're still moving things. Okay, things are moving now. I guess in lieu of Leia, I'll just uh, get this thing started on my say own. It, say it in a really high voice. Yeah. Pre just pretend you're her. And giggle a lot. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, the, the, the fine, fine 89.7 KFJC. I should say broadcasting from Foothill College. This is KFJC Los Altos Hills, just to make it legal. Sure. Why not? you got to do that. And uh, right now, uh, we're going to be talking for the next few hours with Chris Dodge. And I, I suppose his wife, Lydia, will, will sure. pipe up. Yeah, I'm sure she'll chime in. shut me up. Yeah. And uh, we're going to be talking about slap ham the fine label you've been running. Ah, oh, shucks. For, you uh, shouldn't have. Gee, I'm like, sure there's a lot of people saying the same thing right now. You shouldn't <laughs> have, but unfortunately you did, and we have yeah. to fill three hours, so. Four. Four? But we'll ditch last hour with a bunch of music. Don't oh. you worry about that. we got to get Leia in here. Yeah, well, we're yeah. throwing... Garlands around. You could call them Lay's, <laughs> but then LA. people could think they're yeah. potato chips and that'd be commercial advertising. We don't yeah. want to do that. Forget that. So, uh, what made you decide to start Slap a Ham? Mm, well, if someone closed the door, I'd be more inclined to tell you because it's a little bit chilly in here. I'm very particular. Okay, thank you. And, uh, you did get rid of the brown M&M's, right? Mm hmm. Okay, perfect. The David Lee Roth's munching them in the back. Okay, uh, why did I start? Why? Um, why not? Next question. <laughs> let's, make it a, let's make it a real difficult three hours for you. Um, no, I always wanted to start a label, and so I did. Now, um, what happened? I always wanted to start a label for like years and years and years and years, and I never did it. And then one day, um, I think it was, I, I caught wind of um, how to get a catalog from Evatone, this place down in Florida that does flexi discs. And since I really had no idea what I was doing as far as putting out records and all that, once I got the catalog right in front of me and it just said, oh, here, send the tape here and we do everything and you just give us money. And so I, I got the bug. I'm like, wow, actually, I could do this if I wanted to. So I went to uh, this place where I had my life savings and I withdrew money out of my life savings. It was literally my life savings that I never touched for anything except for emergencies. I took $900 out and I called uh, um, Eric, who's in PHC, at the time, who's now Man's a Bastard and Matt from Infest, because at the time they were talking about doing a split release together, and I asked them if I could put it out, and they said, yeah, and the rest is history. Can you say bastard on the radio? You sure can. Yeah. Okay. Bastard, sure. bastard, bastard, bastard. <laughs> Great. See? Uh, what other labels were you into at the time? Hmm. Labels? Well, that's a toughie. I'd probably have to think about that for a while. Um... There were a lot of bands at the time that I liked who weren't really getting recognition. Well, well, New Beginning was putting out a lot of stuff by those bands, like uh, New Beginning put out the PHC album, and they were going to do this four-way split, which was going to be Sticky, um, Infest, PHC, and Half Off, I think, which never happened. Uh, <laughs> but um, other bands like Heresy and stuff like that, but just like a lot, a lot of the more extreme bands people really weren't into... I mean, there were people into them, but no one was willing to put out anything by them except, like, a very small, small handful of people. You know, New Beginning put out a few things, and but Infest put, had to put out their own records, and, and that's about it, you know. Why'd you pick the name slap a -Ham? I don't know if we could go into that. Is it the family hour? Are the kids in bed now? It's after you, 10. You just can't cuss. Yeah, okay. I can imply, though. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Um... Actually, it originally came up... Um, so to speak. <sighs> it originally came up... <laughs> it was, uh, what was it? Uh, Lookout was putting together this compilation album called The Thing That Ate Floyd, which is a two LP compilation. And this, at the time, David Hayes was involved with Lookout. Yep. And, <laughs> and uh, anyhow, he knew at the time that I wanted to start doing a label and he said hey um, we're putting together this booklet that's going to go in the compilation if you want to put an ad in there since I know you're going to do a label and you can have a free ad and everyone will see it and be interested in your label go ahead and make one up so I said yeah okay sure but I didn't have a, a name for the label and I had to give it to him the next day so 
Um, I took a phrase that my friend uh, Walter Glazer used to say all the time. He used to go to Gilman all the time and, and say all these things that were implications uh, or kind of double entendres for, well, how do, how do I put it politely? Tossing off? Uh, That's good enough. Yeah. Um, tossing your salad. That was like another one of his things. Say tossing your salad or, or slap your ham. So I just chose slap a ham. I figured it was silly enough because there were enough labels out there who had really mean names or scary names or whatever. And so I decided to uh, pick something that was none of the above. I chose slap a ham and I didn't put out anything for about, I don't know, about a year. I don't know, it was probably about a year and a half or two years after that ad came out, I finally did something, so. So the label had been an idea you had for yeah. a couple of years before you pulled it yeah. together. In fact, I think that ad said something about how I was going to do a sticky split seven inch with somebody and some other thing, because at the time I was in Sticky and I think No Use for a Name, and I was planning on doing records by both of them, and I didn't until later when I wasn't in either band, so. <laughs> um... Did you ever think that the bands you put out, like Infest, Crossed Out, and Neanderthal, would have as strong an influence on modern hardcore as they, they turned out to be? Mm, no. I mean, especially at the time, nobody was really that into those releases, especially Neanderthal, because the first few releases I did, it was uh, the Infest PHC split, the Melvin's Flexi, the News for Name 7-inch, the Fu Manchu thing, no, that was later. Neanderthal was the fourth one. And when Neanderthal came out, a lot of people weren't really into it. They just, they just didn't know what to think of it. In fact, at, um, at Maximum, I was doing reviews for Maximum at the time. And I took it in there and I, I gave it to Tim. And he listened to it. Because I was trying to figure out who on the magazine would listen to it and give it, like, not a terrible review. And there was nobody except me. And so Tim said, ah, well, why don't you just review it yourself and say <laughs> say why you put it out and why you think it's good. Like, no, I can't do that. That's stupid. That, you know, that's why I'm taking out ads. I can't review my own records. So. I'm not Kent McLeod. Yeah. Uh, hey, you said that, not me. <laughs> that's mean. Um, does he do that? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. And um, they're all great records, too. Yeah. Just read Heart Attack, every fine evolution release in there. Yeah. Well... So be it. More so power that, to him. Yeah, exactly. So anyhow, um, I, someone wound up reviewing it and, and kind of cushioning the blow, but I mean, nobody really liked it. In fact, I remember when I was trading with a lot of people at the time, um, everybody wanted to know you for a name record. Well, of course, I guess, look at them now, so um uh, shows you what, what, that what I know, yeah. So yeah, everyone wanted to know you for a name record, and it's like, ah, uh, you know, don't send any more of that Neanderthal. I, I, would, I didn't really like that very much, so... And now people are willing stabbing to each other in the eye. Yeah, exactly. People are willing to pay like eighty bucks for one, which is ridiculous. Uh, I think Neanderthal, in fact, speaking of them, was a band that sort of started a phrase that uh, may be plaguing you now. And that would be power violence. Yeah, yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what does that word mean? Ladies and gentlemen, we have Mrs. Eric Wood in the studio with us. Yeah, thing. yeah, Brody. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow. Um, I'm getting sidetracked here. Um, yeah, that that pretty much, uh, I don't know, Neanderthal didn't really coin the phrase power violence, but that kind of, uh, I would say, is a starting point for everything. Of course, you know, everything leads back to influences of influences of influences, but as far as, like, what everyone knows as power violence now, I'd say definitely Neanderthal was a starting point for that. It was just Eric from PHC and Matt from Infest, just a project thing they did. But later on, when Eric started uh, Charred Remains, which became Man is the Bastard, they started, uh, you know, Eric is, is a totally colorful person and comes mm -hmm. up with these just amazing phrases that just out of nowhere. They're just incredible. And uh, one that he used to describe his own band was Power Violence, and that's just one that one of those phrases that rather than just kind of trailing off into something else, it just stuck around, and they kept using the phrase. I'm like, wow, Power Violence, cool. So, Viola. Viola, yeah, there it was. Just, they even said it on a record, I think. Yeah, exactly, on the, the split of Aunt Mary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we'll get started on some music. We'll delve into your first release. But however, uh -oh. I wanted to first uh, read this because I find it hilarious myself. Okay. It says, hey morons, welcome to the first ever release from Slapaham. For those of you who read the ad in the Floyd compilation, forget it. It's the wrong address and the wrong info. I was planning on doing that stuff, but didn't have the money. 
For those of you who are completely clueless as to what I'm talking about, go on to the next paragraph. But we're all clued in now, thanks to you. Yes. So anyhow, one day I was sitting around and I said to myself, hump a chimp. I find that one particularly, <laughs> me being the monkey boy. Yeah. Once my thoughts became more rational, I said, I'm going to do something silly today, so I did. I withdrew $900 from my life savings and decided to start a record label. See, I didn't lie. That's exactly what I told you earlier. See, and it's all here in writing. Mm-hmm. And it's all here... And Lydia's writing, is it not? Yeah. Wow. Well, I, Lydia wanted to be involved somehow, so I said, well, here, why don't, why don't you rewrite the thing that I wrote? So she did. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yes, I'll take this crumb. I'll take this dry crust of bread. Thank yes. you. And then uh, it says here, <laughs> uh, this isn't meant to be a big-time production anyhow. It's just having fun, as well as a way to give a tip of the hat to these bands for being such cool people. It's a nice way to drive some record collectors ape bleep as well. <laughs> Ape bleep? <laughs> ape BM. Does it really say that? No, this is Ape BM. Oh, okay. As well, so uh, you, you succeeded there. Okay. Uh, thanks for investing your hard-earned cash in this. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, I reckon you can make a few bucks selling it to some chump at a record swap in a year or two, or eight. Yeah. <laughs> um, so how come you don't write stuff in your, in your records anymore? I mean, the mm -hmm. Melvin's Flexi has another blurb in it, but... That's true. I don't know. I never really thought about that. Maybe I should start doing that. Each each release will have an essay. <laughs> By yours truly. Here's I'm feeling pensive today, and I thought I'd share it with you. And now excruciating terror. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so right now we're going to start off with Slap of Ham number one, and uh, this will be, of course, PHC. What is the first track on here? Never fair. Mm, I don't know. Tell Let's me. be really. Uh, Never prepared fair and uh, else. yeah. Let's just say it's never fair. Sure. Okay. On KFJC. Yeah, I think it is actually. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Okay, uh, right there was, we're back. That was Infest. What the hell's the name of that track? Mm. Mindless. Burr. I knew that. Burr. Yeah. Yeah. Infest doing Mindless, PHC before that did Never Fair, and uh, both those were live, right? Yeah, they were both live at Gilman. In fact, that was, I believe that was PHC's last show ever. Wow. Yeah, and there were probably about 30 people there. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, Infest played that show, too. That, that was their last show up here. I think Infest only came up here twice. First one was really good, but that second one, they opened that show, and there were about 10 people there. It was really, really sad. Was it your idea to do it as a live thing, or they already had um, that planned? No, I think that they'd already planned on doing that. That was the whole thing. They wanted to do a split live 7-inch. I said, well, hey, how about split live 8-inch? Wacky! So they were definitely into that. And how many of those did you press? 1,000. What colors? No more. Um, only, only blue. They're all blue? All of them are blue. But do you have a different one? No, I'm not you blue. Okay. I got a blue one. What about the covers? They're, they're all right. green, were they? They're all green. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. But although it has been bootlegged a couple times. Really? Yeah. Wow, I never even it has a, has a, a different cover, and, uh, sound quality is horrible. It's, it's a, is it on vinyl? Yeah, it it's a on vinyl 7-inch, and, um, the one I have, obviously the, the guy who did it listened to his flexi like about a hundred times and wore all the grooves down, so all you hear is surface noise. <laughs> you just hear... <laughs> do, 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 do. You know, it's just all noise. The, the, the hiss is louder than the actual music, so it's pretty amusing. Um, so after that, you hooked up with the Melvins. How'd that go about? Mm, well, I think... Uh, I don't remember how I actually met them as... That was around the time I moved to San Francisco, and I just met them because they were in San Francisco, too. At the time, they didn't really have that much out. They put out a single on CZ, like, about three years before or something like that. And uh, CZ, like, sold a couple of those and then kept the rest under the guy's bed, literally. Because I, I think he was selling them for way too much, and no one had heard of them, and no one was buying them. So he, um, Dale, I remember, told me that the guy literally had most of the copies under his bed because no one wanted to buy them. And I saw it for thirty dollars at Epicenter. Right. Oof. Those were the days. <sighs> but uh, anyhow, um, I met them in, in SF, and I think around the time um, they didn't really have anything else coming out. And um, I was telling them how I was doing this eight-inch, and they're like, "Hey, well, we kind of like to do an eight-inch. Maybe we'll get that info from you and put it out." And I said, "Well, why don't I keep the info and I'll put it out?" They said, "Okay." So I put out the Melvin's Flexi, and um, that was around the same time. I think the only other thing they put out around that time was was their second album, which was Ozma. And you drew the cover for that? Correct. Wow. And so the, the circle gets even smaller. Doesn't it? Yeah. And Ozma is, no joke, one of Yoko Ono's favorite albums. No. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's true. It's one of her favorites. She's a, she's a huge Melvin's fan, so is uh, Sean Lennon. And the Melvins re recorded yeah. for Yoko, too. Yeah. Recorded, recorded what? They recorded a song together. Yeah. Down in L.A. last time she came through, which was like about a year ago or something like that. It's Weird. True. That is a band that just... Actually, that is the band that, that got my attention on Slap of Ham. Yeah. Because I wasn't really into fast stuff at all. I just always liked slow stuff. And the yeah. Melvins... I mean, I didn't even listen to new music until the Melvins came about. And I was like, yeah. wow, this is it. And as I said about trying to get their discography, I stumbled across Slap of Ham and... Yeah. Somehow my mind opened up a little more and I started buying all the other slap Am stuff. They were definitely pioneers. It's funny, their first album that came out on Alchemy, that, that, that was the only other thing that, that was out before, I think, the Flexi. Um, that first album that came out on, on Alchemy, this guy Victor ran it, and Victor was really crazy. And I remember he kind of treated them as his little pet project. He didn't think that anyone would like them or that it would go anywhere. And so he kind of... Uh, as far as details kind of swept them under the rug and it, I remember the, the first pressing of the album on the back there's a picture of the three of them on the back of Gluey Porch Treatment and he got the names wrong underneath I forget he switched I think Buzz and Dale's names or something like that he just got the names totally wrong I think he left off the 
the song titles or something like that. The very first pressing is really screwed up, so. And, Just uh, like even more nerd trivia for you. We want more of it. <laughs> so you did how many, three pressings of There's this record? Three pressings of the, uh, the Melvin's 8-inch. Um, each was a thousand. And the first cover was the Buzz cover, which has a, a picture of Buzz when he's about six or something like that. And then the, the second and third pressings both have pictures of Dale when he was about six or seven. Uh, the third pressing was supposed to have Lori, but she chickened out and never gave me a picture, so it wound up being Dale again. And I think I'd thrown away the picture of Buzz, so <laughs> it had to be Dale again. <laughs> and uh, don't ask me the colors, because I can't remember which one was which. I know one of the pressings was clear, one of them was yellow, and one was something else. The third I had red and green. Mm -hmm. Or yellow, whatever that, that fluorescent. Yeah, there's a red. Okay. Yeah, red's the other one. That's what I have right here. Yeah. And then the so was it your was it your choice hey, again to do boy. this? What was it your choice again to do this live, or that that was just what they um, gave you? That was just theirs. Um, I just told them to give me whatever, and we put it out. Because you had blessings on it, but that ended up being on Bullhead, like a year later or whatever. True. Yeah. So that there was a live version of that because they had a good live tape from Gilman, and then they used the other song that's on there, that pronoun piece me which was a title they made up on the spot because they couldn't remember what it was really called. <laughs> um, that was from, actually, the original sessions from when they recorded their first 7-inch in 86 or whenever it was. They do that a lot, changing the titles. Yeah. I think some stuff on the first 7-inch got changed when it went on to Gluey and stuff. Yeah. Weird. As far as, I don't know if it was intentional or, or the same thing where they couldn't really remember at the time what it was called, so they just made up something. So. So right now we're going to hear your blessing as it appeared before it was finally released on Bullhead live at Gilman here on KFJC. If I remember to do this right. There we go.
Yeah! 89.7 FM KFJC. That was Melvin's doing Your Blessed from uh, the 8 inch out on Slappingham. And uh, Leah has finally joined us. No, and, she, and she's mute this evening. She's bewildered. But she's attending. I can't believe this. We're just going to spoon feed her over here. <laughs> I've been waiting to do this special for like, what, at least a year. When was that? I first asked you at least a year ago. Something huh? like that. Yeah. And yeah, it was. It was about a year ago. And here I am tonight, half an hour late. Tonight you just had to blow dry your hair that extra <laughs> 30 minutes. But it That's looks right. fabulous. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I, let me so add that your hair looks you. fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. So it was worth it. So your guys' hair looks Oh, fabulous. thank you. <laughs> so, so uh, beauty tips. I uh, am. With the Slappingham beauty pageant <laughs> parlor tips. <laughs> Up next, uh, you put out the No Use for a Name. You weren't in the band at all when you did this record? No, not at the time. Actually, it was supposed to be um, with the new lineup. Um, there was this guy, I think his name was Rob who was playing guitar at the time. They actually wound up never recording anything with him, but he was in a band for about a year playing guitar. But I wanted to put out a 7-inch of their new stuff, but um, he, they never got around to recording. So um, I needed to put out something at the time, and I said, look, guys, I need to put out something. It's time. So um, they said, well, just put out the old stuff, and um, when we have something new, we'll give it to you, and you can put that out. So I put out an old recording that I was on, um, even though I hadn't been in the band for a while, just so I could put something out, because I had money to do it, and I didn't have anything else to put out. So, And thus, the Let M Out 7-inch was born. Let M Out. Let M Out. Um, oh, I feel, uh, there's another pocket. <laughs> when did you let M out? Yeah. Well, when did I let M this out? This was in 90, or? No, that, well, yeah. Actually, I'm glad you said that. It was, I think it was January of 1990, and... The PHC Infest was, I believe, June-ish of 89, and um, Melvin's was around August or September of 89. So now we're up to January of 90. That was my first slap ahead record, by the way. Aww. Really? That was my third. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and how many did you press? Mm, there were 2,000 of those. The first pressing... Um, let me see, the first pressing was all the solid colors. All of them were colored vinyl. First one was all solid co covers and had a, um, let's see, was that the gray cover? I think it was a gray cover. Then all the second pressing was all clear colors, and those all had purple covers, I think. Oh, I have the purple cover. It's yeah, the I second press? Mm, yep. Oh. It's worth about $2 less than the other ones, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> I saw that one at the for 8 Really? Yep. Wow. So uh, let's spin that one. Right now we're going to hear off of Let M Out. <laughs> the hell's the name of the first song? I, I wrote these down and I didn't even like log it. Or did I? I don't know. Am I smart? It won't happen again. Hey, all right. You and, and it didn't. That was the only No Use for Name <laughs> record I did. <laughs> so right now we're going to hear No Use for Name on KFJC.
So I actually Is that me? Am I on? Oh, there we go. 89.7 yeah, yeah. FM, KFJC. I put that in. So let's let's do that. <laughs> That's not what I wanted, is it? <laughs> Screwing up left and right, the okay. evil monkey boy. So here's a, a tangent. Uh, what you're hearing in the background is the Neanderthal 7-inch, which started the whole power violence movement. And uh, We're not hearing any Neanderthal. Oh, really? Don't be silly. <laughs> Psych. So, uh, what, what did we just hear? We heard, uh, let M out. Let M out. Not the letter M, it, it's apostrophe E-M. Let M out. And, uh, that came out in early 90. Yeah. And then. And then. And only then. Things really started to happen. We came down to Neanderthal which I'm having great trouble queuing. <laughs> okay, then Neanderthal. This is why you should have bought all the LPs, because if there was technology, who cares about that? We should have just... No, no effing technology. Okay, so, uh, PHC played their last show, and you got a record of it. And then Eric Wood went on to... Actually, Cyclops was happening at the same time? Yeah, or? Cyclops was happening at the same time as uh, Neanderthal. And uh, it was just him and, and Matt Domino from uh, Infest. Both of them were just doing this project. And he asked if I'd be interested in doing it. And I said, hell yeah. And it came out. And there was much rejoicing. Not according to what you said earlier. Oh, that's true. I'm a hypocrite. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, people, people didn't hate it. I mean, people who liked it really liked it. But there were a lot of people who were just kind of indifferent and didn't care. Did and you look at them now? They're groveling like the pigs that they are. Did you no. think that it was? Sorry, I got carried away. <laughs> <laughs> what? Did you think that it was uh, not going to catch? I mean, I'm, of course you wouldn't put it out if you thought, oh, everybody's going to hate this. But yeah. was that a concern at all? No. I mean, I, I really liked it, and I knew that there were people out there. I knew there were like-minded people somewhere in the universe that somehow we'd be joined through some sort of cosmic uh, connection, and yeah some new agey sort of thing like that but I, I knew that people would like it I knew that there would be some people who liked it because there's there's always extreme music out there but uh, I think it was a, just a bit too out there for some people so about what time did you hook up with them to put this out uh well I don't know <laughs> it was at some point in in 1990 I mean obviously it was after Nice for Name so uh, to be honest, you're losing me. I don't know when okay. it was exactly. Uh -huh. but it was 1990. And how many were, how many were pressed? There were... Wow, this music is great. It's Kiwi's <laughs> Big Adventure. Oh, good. Good choice. Um, let's see. Uh, I did a thousand at first. And actually, I had 300 covers left over, so we did another 300 or 350 as a second pressing. Out of those, there were 100 that were purple. And... The purple ones are the ones that nobody has, and someone actually offered somebody like 80 bucks for a purple one one time. Wow! Recently, which is pretty ridiculous. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to your record auction later because I'm sure there's yeah. many a, a fine tale. Yeah, involved. We're, gonna we're gonna have an auction over the air. Oh, sort of all KFJC records. No, yeah, nothing exactly. to do with slapping them. We're just yeah. getting rid of everything we have. Yeah, you got a lot of stuff back there. We could probably bank like 50 or 60 bucks. Yeah, quite a lot before we leave tonight. So. So uh, let's get into Neanderthal right now, the first song off of Fighting Music. And uh, this track, of course, is Crawl on KFJC. Yeah! yeah. 
89.7 KFJC. We just heard a track from the Neanderthal, from the Fighting Music Summit. Stop the Hill Records number four, and we're here in the studio with Chris Dodge and Evil Monkey Boy and Leia Organa. And what was the name of that song? Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Okay, I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> so it says here it was 89, October 89, and February of 90. Well, that's when it was recorded, anyway, so it was after that, and, um... Uh, May of 1990. Oh. Well, we were just talking sure, about the, uh, pressings. The first one was, um, black vinyl? Yeah. Was it? And... First pressing, there's a thousand. They're all black vinyl. Second pressing was just to fill out all the covers, because they still had 300 or 350 covers left. So, we did, uh... 100 on purple and either 200 or 250, I can't remember exactly, on black. So there's 100 purple ones out there. Wow. So start looking. No, there's only 99 because there's one right here. That's right. There's only 99 purple ones out there. No, there's Show you 98 what? in my closet. So there's only one purple <laughs> one out there. <laughs> <laughs> so after Neanderthal, Sticky yeah. was... You re-released the Sticky Cuddle EP. Yeah, because it, it originally came out on a label called Off the Disc, which is over in Switzerland. And that guy only did 500 copies of it. And actually, when we got our copies, we had to buy them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because uh, he, he spent so much on it. He, he paid for our recording, but he couldn't afford to give us copies. <laughs> so he sent us 30 and wanted us to pay him for them. So, wow. yeah. Wow. So anyhow, uh, needless to say, not ma not very many people got that one, and uh, so several years later, there were people who allegedly were, you know, willing to spend a lot of money for it. So I finally got the tapes back from him, and re-released it in huge quantities over here, so that um, there wouldn't be a problem with with people paying way too much in auctions or bootlegging or anything like that. So. So how many, I know there's different colors because Leia's is orange and mine's green. Uh, I couldn't even tell you how many colors there were. I just told, um, I just told the pressing plant to go crazy, and they did. They sure so, did. Look, yeah, they're good. There's, it's they're like somebody blew bubble gum all over yeah, this thing. Yeah, they're all splattered vinyl, and all of them are totally different, and there's 2,000 of them, and there's a million different colors of vinyl and about a million different colors of the covers as well, so. But Murray Bowles is on every one, right? Correct. Yeah, very few people realize that that's, that's Murray Bowles, the famous photographer on the front, on the swing set. Oh, that is him! Yeah. <laughs> wow. that's like the, the whole concept with Cuddle at the time was, that was the time when a lot of bands were kind of, bands who were hardcore through the whole eight, throughout the 80s, um, were getting kind of wimpy and playing really kind of melodic stuff. And, I mean, I love melodic stuff, but, um, you know, stuff like Seven Seconds, New Wind, and Uniform Choice went into their weird little stage, and... All these bands were suddenly just being really soft, and so we decided that, that we'd take it a step further and make it cuddle. Ah, With all the cute puppies. Yeah, little puppies and flowers and stuff like that. And um, we couldn't think of a more positive cover image than Murray Bowles and a swing set. So Awesome. And what's with the happy days on the back? Just uh, more, more happiness and exactly, joy? Exactly, exactly. No, we, had, we had a penchant for Fonzie. Even the Fonz is, is giving a little smirk there. Yeah, yeah. You know. The leather jacket wasn't coating him entirely. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, was was Murray originally on the cover of the mm -hmm. off the disc one? Wow. Yeah. And uh, you recorded this probably in '87 or '88. Mm, I think '88 is recorded, and so it was re-released. Ooh, I don't know. Either late '90 or early '91, maybe. I really can't remember how long it was between releases. Yeah, uh, I think it was. Your friends, wash your feet. Get these other sticky discs and uh, get a little discography. It lists everything that um, isn't available. And all these comps that, geez, like eight or nine comps sticky was on. A bunch of comps that no one can find. And uh, for extra copies of this record, one could send a nude picture of Desi Arnaz or a self-addressed stamped envelope to you at Slapaham. It says here it was uh, recorded, mixed, and all that in four hours. A marvelous place, Art of it Years, located uh, in San Francisco, May 29th, 88. But it doesn't say when you uh, re-released yeah. it here on Slapping Him. So Sorry. We lose out there. Yeah. Are we ready to the listen to this? A loss. Yeah. Okay, so right now we're going to hear uh, Intercourse the System, because it starts off all spooky. I like the way it yeah. sounds. So uh, hit up the, uh, the play button over there, Ms. Organa. This is Sticky on KFJC.
Turn to the big adventure. I'm the Evil Monkey Boy. This is Leo Argana. We are KFJC and we're interviewing Chris Dodge, the uh, kingpin of Slapaham Records. And Lydia. And Lydia. His wife. Pawesky? His lovely wife. I, I can't pronounce your last name. Paweski? Paweski? And you actually had a lot to do with Slapaham. Huh? I mean, not a lot, but I mean, you've been here all these years through with Chris since the very beginning. So thin and thin and thin yeah. and thick. So you've seen what he's been going through and what he went through and I'm sure you helped him package the records over and over, um, putting the records well, in the sleeves. Well let's I've say, seen let's fire say she, and I've seen rain. Say she's given a lot <laughs> I've of, seen sunny days that I thought would never end. Let's <laughs> say she's given a lot of moral support. Oh and some I moral gave support. you the slap a hand mascot. Let's not true. forget that. But that is true. That's another piece of trivia. He wasn't born with the slap a hand mascot? Lydia designed the dog, wow. or whatever creature you want to call Oh, that's right. One of the guys that's in Apartment cute. 213 just wrote me, and he drew that dog. And what a rip-off. Yeah. He drew the exact slap of him dog on his letter. Hey, there's some guy in Florida who has a tattoo of that on his back. <laughs> he, was at, he was at Fiesta Grande this year, and he showed it to me, and my, just, my jaw dropped to the floor, <laughs> and I had to get a camera, but no one had a camera. Dang. Actually, John from Gob had a camera, but all his pictures were taken. And I asked the guy to send me a picture, but he didn't. Oh. So I'm going to go to Florida this summer and beat him up. <laughs> I would. <laughs> so, uh, rolling... I'm going to sue him, because <laughs> I have it trademarked. Rolling down the catalog, number six we're at, I believe. And that would be Fu Manchu. Yay! Yes, I'll whip that one out here. Yay! Yeah. That's Yay. one of my favorite records of all time. Really? That, that seems to be everyone's least favorite Man, it seems it's like one of the most obscure. This is another yeah. record where I went, wow, this slap of ham's a keen label. Yeah. And, of course, I was into this slow stuff, yeah. so... And this being the big Fu Manchu Melvin's rip-off record. Yeah. I saw, like, so many copies of that in, like, the used bin at Epicenter. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> you know, in fact, and now was, it's in like... fact, it was so hard to find, I was tempted to buy them all, and just, <laughs> just so I could have them for the people who wanted them later. <laughs> so how did you hook up with Fu Manchu, or were they even Fu Manchu when you met them? It's funny you should say that. <laughs> um, when I first met those guys, um, they were in a band called Virulence and um, they had an album out on alchemy and um, the virulence was just completely amazing 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 um, they were like they're super powerful like black flag seeing them live they're just incredible and they really wanted to do something by them um, they had an album out and which was really great so they said that they would do a seven inch and um, they're just one of those bands who's really pokey and they took a really long time. In fact, they took so long that they wound up changing their name and changing how they sounded. And by the time they got around to 
recording, um, they sounded less like Black Flag and more like the Melvins, and they had changed their name to Fu Manchu, and I got it, and, you know, I, I kind of liked it, but it was, it was very Melvinsy, and it wasn't exactly what it, my, my goal of what I wanted to put out in the first place, but I still liked it, and uh, it's probably one of the, one of the rarest of the Slap of Ham records, because there was only a thousand of them, and that was it. Wow. Wow. Because it, it, it sold really slowly, because <laughs> people, I think people respond more to the fast stuff, and people weren't really into the, the slow stuff like that, so. Um, what do you went think out of, print of them? And disappeared. Now being like on MTV and stuff. I think they're great. I really like them a lot. I think they're, you know, they're just pure rock now. It seems know? like a lot of people in the quote unquote underground or whatever still love Fu Manchu no yeah, matter well, what. Well, you know, they're a great band, on a label regardless back. of what label they're on or, you know, how big or little they are or, you know, any of that, you know, even if they're playing coliseums and they're playing the music that they play now, I still like them. They're, they're just a rocking band. You know, they're really good. So this was, this was your sixth release, and looking back now, three of your first six releases, bands on MTV. Any, any misgivings? Wow. That's true. <laughs> That's pretty bizarre. But it's true. Dude. Okay, I, can't, I never thought I'd see the day when Infest was on MTV. But I know. It came and, you know. Oh, that Infest? Big, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that would be for those at Just home. Kidding. No use for a name, Melvin's and Fu Manchu. Yeah. That's what That's I was thinking. The hitmaker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if I, I ever see I Eric Wood me. on MTV, I'll, I'll flip my lid. Yeah. <laughs> actually, actually, what would you think would be the next band that you've put out to be on MTV? Oh my God. I have oh one God. in mind. What? Well, talk talk to somebody today. They actually said, "Man is the bastard," and I, I laughed, mm. but. That's ha. scary. Maybe it's just some really quirky little side note thing, like, hey, there's this really, really weird band that none of you have ever heard of, and they they talk about them and show like a five second clip of them live, and then that would be it. Yeah. You know? Maybe just because they're so bizarre. They're but. too slick. Yeah. They're too slick for MTV. Yeah. I don't know. The only other one I would think would be I Hate God. Yeah, that's looking the one at, I had in looking mind. Looking at the discography here, because uh, not that they're accessible but just because they've gone on big tours or something you know they and they're pantera's friends yeah <laughs> that helps they, they toured with pantera i guess and toured with white zombie yeah yeah and they're touring yeah. with neurosis right now I think. yeah so i mean obviously they've, they've gotten some some breaks and that way which is cool you know i still like them too they're still a great band regardless of you know yeah. if they're playing someone's basement or playing with pantera so <laughs> I don't know, I could picture Spaz doing some kind of Green Day type videos, you know, Ooh. you could dye your hair and everything, yeah, and sure. be on like the cover of Sassy, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what we were going for with that romantic gorilla split, we, we, we tried to get in a cute band alert, but yeah. It worked. Yeah, and it worked. So, there you go. We that's haven't been on MTV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, it, uh. It, we just did it for chicks, really, and, and look. Look at me. <laughs> and you got married. So. Yeah. Well, I think during I the Spaz special also. last year, Dan and Max were taking phone calls trying to get girls, and now they both have girlfriends. Do they? Oh, That's I guess they do, they yeah. Do. Oh. So, uh, the it really does work. <laughs> Without further digression, let's get back to Fu Manchu and actually play Fu Manchu. <laughs> this is off of the uh, untitled 7-inch, and the track we're going to hear is called Bula Bass on KFJC.
surprise. 89, wait, that's not me. Okay, 89.7 <laughs> FM, KFJC. That was Fu Manchu doing Bula Bass off of their uh, Slap a Ham 7 inch because we're doing a Slap a Ham special. Chris Dodge in the studio for the interviews or interview, as it were, since there's only one of us mm -hmm. or him or them. Yay, up next is the famous, famous sentence that everybody was hooting and hollering about. <laughs> So you hooting and hollering. So you got some wacky idea to do a compilation. Yeah. Forty-one bands, sixty-four <coughs> songs, and I swore I thought there was seven minutes of New York's nausea on there. And I was like, how do you get seven minutes and then all these <laughs> other bands? You know, but I'm sure everybody can get that. Well, I don't know, maybe not, maybe just me. <laughs> but um, gosh, when did you decide or, or think of to do this? Really, your brain scheme really silly hair brain scheme of mine that um, actually happened. Um, I was homesick one day when I thought of that, believe it or not. Um, In I don't your know. delirium. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. In my delirium, walking around the house, oh boy, wouldn't it be a great idea to <laughs> write to a million bands and put them all on one record? And um, I kind of hate doing compilations, so of course I took it upon myself to do the ultimate pain in the, pain in the butt compilation. Um, I can say ass. It's late. Yeah. Ass, 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 bastard, ass, ass, bastard, bastard, ass, ass. <laughs> um, so anyhow, um, I was just thinking about, it. well, how cool would it be to, to put out this album and, and like write to all my favorite bands and have them all just do like 15 second songs or 30 second songs and put like, you know, 50 bands or 100 bands on an album. And I was thinking, okay, well, well, Poison Idea and all these bands. I'm thinking, okay, well. I could write to these bands, but none of them will write me back. So why don't I write to bands that no one's ever heard of and uh, put together a 7-inch because no one would ever be able to sit through an album like that. So <laughs> um, I wrote to just like a lot of the underground, just noise and thrash and hardcore bands, uh, the cream of the crop, as mm. it were. And um, about a year later, the little baby Bliarg or Blurg or however you want to pronounce well, it. Well, how do you pronounce it? Um, at, first, it at first I used to say Blurg, but looking at it, it's more like Bliarg, and some other people have said Bliarg, so... I say Blurg. Yeah, and there's, there's so many bands on here, and I mean, some of them, of course, are, are still big names, or at least legends, and some of them never heard from yeah, again. Exactly. Mork Hotel, what is that? <laughs> That's actually Dale Crover from the Melvin. No way. Really? Right? Wow, <laughs> I don't know that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Dale weaseling his way onto yet another slap of That's hand right. release. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, any misgivings about the meat S's being on here? Not at all. Well, oh, okay. Loved them. trying to nail something. Guys, no. you know what? It's like when I, when I first got this, when it came out, I hadn't even heard of, like, you know, I only heard like, a couple of these bands. Now I look at it, it's like, I'm pretty stupid. I was very, <laughs> very stupid back then. I mean, not that I'm any smarter, but, you know, geez, look at this layout. How, it must have been hard to get everybody to get send all their stuff in on time. And yeah, it was, which is why it took a year or more for it to come out, and why um, there were actually supposed to be more bands on it, but it wound up being less, which was fine, because I don't think I would have had room for the other bands who were supposed to come through. And I wound up doing half the layouts because the bands flaked on those, too. So I just wow. cut and pasted from their records and like the letters that they sent me and just threw together layouts just so it could <laughs> come out. But actually, the first pressing of that has a booklet. All those layouts are in a booklet instead of a fold-out thing. And after doing the booklet, um, which is a real pain, um, I decided, nope, no more of this. I'm going to reduce everything microscopically and make it a fold-out, which is much easier. So, yeah. And, and I think that's. I think if any release put Slappaham on the map, as it were, it would be this record. And this was 91, correct? I believe so, yeah. And, uh... I, I hate to do this, but how many pressed? Whew. I couldn't even say, because it got repressed many, many times yeah. um, in, like, quantities of, you know, 500 and 1,000, just to kind of... I, I wasn't sure when it was going to stop, and it kind of never did. <laughs> People just kept buying them, so I just kept pressing them in small quantities, and then eventually I just got sick of looking at it, so <laughs> I, stopped, I stopped putting them out. I wanted to put out new things, so I couldn't even say, but it, it's probably, out of all the releases, probably the one that... I've done the most of, I would say like between five and six thousand maybe. Wow. So let's, uh, you ready to jump into this? Well, well, well gee, how, how are you going to decide what song to play? Or are you going to play several? Just um, drop I'm going to play a couple. Yeah, 
Could you okay. call the 27th track? <laughs> uh, I'm going to just cue that up. Okay, actually, yeah. I queued up uh, two of the bigger names on it. Maybe I should have gone for the lesser knowns, but I'm a dork. Because these are two bands um, that you didn't release anything else from uh, well, until... No, actually, you still haven't. Who's that? Uh, the first one we're going to hear is Hell Nation. Yeah. And the second one will be uh, Ass Up. Yeah. Um... Well, and what you were supposed to do on, on the Slapaham Fiesta Grande yeah, flyer that right. said there was going to be a Pluto right. Asuk split. Yeah, Asuk was was the band that headlined the very first uh, Fiesta Grande, and then originally I was supposed to do a split with uh, Asuk and Plutocracy, and, and Asuk lagged for about three or four years, and eventually it wound up being the Discordance Axis Plutocracy split, which came out what like a year ago, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> something like that. That's how long it took. So did you have tracks to come out? So. Did you have a lot of trouble with bands doing that, like just dropping out of the project? Because there was supposed really. to be a Melvin sandwich bag or whatever that was. Yeah, that wound up being the five inch. Oh, okay. We just kind of cut corners, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll go into that later when that comes up. So right now we're going to hear Hell Nation. What's the Hell Nation song called? Suppression. Suppression. See, I remembered that one. Wow. And it was a big deal because it just got finally re-released on their CD, right? Mm. I, I, I did couldn't it? understand sure. why. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Why not? So here is Hell Nation with the song Suppression off of Bliarg on Slapaham here. Blurg. Blurg. I'm sorry, Lydia. <laughs> on KFJC. FM. Oh, broadcasting from Foothill College. This is KFJC Los Altos Hills. That was uh, Big Wayne, was it yeah, not? That was Wayne. Uh, that phone message that he left me. I figured that that was appropriate for the Bliard comp. Blur. Yeah, <laughs> that too. So uh, each side ends with a phone message, and the other yeah. side ends with your father-in-law. Yeah, it ends with with Lydia's dad. Um, because he called up one day to listen to the message on our machine, and all he said was, that's cute. <laughs> so we figured that was a nice ending for the whole record of just all bands going, wah, 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 wah. that's cute. <laughs> and I, I don't think to this day he knows that, that he's on the record. Oh, no, we've told him, but... <laughs> oh, we told him, but we didn't give him a copy because of some of the, the names of the bands and songs <laughs> that were on And there. also, he's like an avid classical music fan, and yeah. he's like... The mouth fart wasn't going to go over no, there. No. no, he probably wouldn't appreciate it that much. Does this sound like Prokofiev? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. His mouth fart? Yeah. Like <laughs> so, uh, am I on here? Good morning. After uh, after Blarg, Blarg, Blurg, whatever you want to call it, you released a record or co-released a record that uh, isn't officially a Slapaham record, or is it? Um, yes and no. No, it's I don't know. I it wasn't on my discography at first, but just because I kind of forgot about it, but I added it recently. <laughs> As the Matrix says, yeah, Slapaham number seven point five. But it's the uh, Charter Mains Pink Turds in Space split and uh, Pink Turds in Space band from Scotland who's amazing um, definitely an underappreciated band and the uh, first side was Charter Remains which was the first release for what soon became Man is the Bastard Charter Remains which became Charter Remains aka Man is the Bastard became Man is the Bastard Charter Remains was basically PHC same lineup <coughs> yeah exactly um, on this recording they were it was the exact same lineup as PHC and um, so Eric was putting this out and basically he paid for the release and I sold it and um, it's just he wanted to, he wanted Slap a Ham to be on there because at the time I was starting to get established and it would have been easier to uh, to sell the records than if he had just put it out himself and no one had any idea who the two bands were. So um, we made it Slap a Ham number seven and a half, 
since it wasn't like really something that that I called up the bands and asked them if they wanted to do. You know, it was Eric's project, but I, I just kind of co-released it with him so that uh, so that more people would hopefully listen to it. Wow. Well, that was nice of you. Thank you. <laughs> so we we ready to spin this one? How many how many of these were pressed? Um, boy, <clears throat> got me there. I think two thousand. Um, I know there's one pressing. I don't know if it was two separate pressings or one. No, hold. It's all coming back now. Uh, the first pressing there were uh, green with red splattered vinyl, and there was red with green splatters. And then the second pressing was all um, black vinyl. Oh. Either that or it's reversed. Either or maybe the first pressing is black and the second is splattered. But I think the first pressing splattered. There are definitely two pressings. And, yeah, and one, one, of the, one of the pressings has a red cover. So yeah. I, think, I think the black vinyl one has a red cover and the colored vinyl one has a black That's, cover. Yeah. And Eric said there were all kinds of different splatters. That some of them were more rare than others. Yeah, well he probably kept those. Yeah, I'm sure he did. <laughs> So uh, let's spin uh, Charred Remains right now with one of Leah's favorite songs, The Arena. Yay! <laughs> Here on KFJC. Yay!
89.7 FM, KFJC. That was Pink Turds in Space. Did the, were there any titles for this, these songs? There's yeah, they're in there somewhere. I think they're on the insert thing. They're, no, they're just stories. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That was the last Can't song. Help you out. That was the last song on uh, the Pink Turds in Space, Charter Mains split. Yeah, you'll never find it anyway, so don't worry about it. Yeah. But that awesome song is on a later release, so if you can't find the vinyl, maybe you can find the, the DIY, DIY CD, CD. Which is actually True. probably pretty rare now, anyway. So it is. I'm getting people are bugging me. Yeah, people making offers for 80 bucks for your DIY CD. <laughs> hey! Oh! Oh! <laughs> Whoa! Oh, I'm sorry! <laughs> no. The Haunted Station. It's jinxed. It's jinxed. <laughs> I stepped on your microphone. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. I mean, your headphones. Okay, let it go. <laughs> Everyone take a deep breath. Let's regroup. Focus. Okay, so that was okay, uh, let's go. That was Slapperham number seven point five. And uh up next you released a band called Capitalist Casualties. True. Which eventually made it onto six Slapperham releases. Really? Oh yeah. <laughs> you know. Now that, this huh? band had been around for four years. Yeah. At no least, record. At least four years before uh before the seven inch came out. And that was definitely a crime. Because they, they were great. They're an amazing band. The first time I saw them, they were playing at Gilman. And uh, I think it was their first show at Gilman. They were opening. So I, I can't remember who else was playing. But they once I saw them, they just blew me away. Because it was like seeing early DRI where they had the huge set list that went all the way down the wall. And there were like 30 songs or 35 songs on there. And they just blasted through. I'm like, oh my god, these guys are the best. And uh, I remember going up and talking to Jeff. I'm like, hey, I'm in some band called Sticky. You want to trade demos? So uh, I think eventually we did, and uh, we just traded tapes for a little while, and I saw them eventually, and Sticky and Capitalist played a few shows together. And um, <clears throat> then they just kind of disappeared, and, and uh, one day they reappeared, and they still didn't have a record out. <laughs> it was about four years later, and I'm like, God, people are stupid for not releasing anything for these guys. So um, they're going into a real studio to record, because previous to that they had just done like garage recordings, and I think they went to Gilman and recorded a demo once. But uh, they're going into a real studio doing a real recording. They don't want to put out a record, and at the time I wanted to put it out. So, Viola, it was the Capitalist Casualties, The Art of Ballistic 7 Inch, was born. So, uh, let's hear something from that right now. I think I have queued up My Dad Kills for the USA. So, we'll, we'll pretend it's that song see. here on KFJC. He makes average grades and plans to join the Marines after graduation. After school, he spends most of his time working at a waste disposal plant. He likes to party and drink with his friends. Home is for watching television. <laughs> KFJC, we're in the studio with Mr. Chris Dodge and his lovely wife Lydia Pawlowski. Hello. And Evil Monkey Boy, I'm Leia Argana. And tonight we're doing the Mighty Morphine Power of Violence <laughs> special here, Mayhem special. And 
that is why we're doing this all slap of hand discography sort of interview thing. And what we just heard right there was... Uh, Capitalist Casualties off of their Art of Ballistic 7-inch, their very first record, courtesy of Chris Dodge and Slap Ham, finally getting some props that they deserved and uh, continuing to do so over the years, as we'll see momentarily. And that track was called uh, My Dad Kills for the USA. Good choice. And uh, the record that came out after that is probably one of the most sought-after Slap Ham records. Definitely. And that would be the crossed out seven inch. That would be the crossed out seven inch. There yeah. are only a thousand of those as well. That, and that never got repressed. Was that due to the the weird mastering with the gaps between the songs? No, I think uh, I'm trying to think back what the whole reason was for that. I mean, typically with almost all my releases to date, except for very recently, um, everything I would press like uh, I do one or two pressings at the most, and then move on just because I want to keep putting out new stuff instead of just dwelling on the same old stuff so um i don't know i, th I think maybe um after this seven inch was gone i was i was on to other things but also i know the band was very kind of picky uh, about their own material and maybe at that time they weren't satisfied with it and didn't want really want it to come out again <laughs> luckily it got bootlegged hooray hooray for bootleggers <laughs> Thank and then gosh. they got bootlegged again. They're, they're the lucky band yeah. who doesn't want their stuff re-released, but it keeps getting bootlegged. Yeah, exactly. So hopefully it'll come out officially someday. You know, allegedly, uh, you know, Ben from Crest was going to do it years ago. And hmm. So I don't know what the status is. Um, you know, I, I would definitely do it at this point because I can, for the first time in my life, afford to do it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens. And until then, keep looking out for those bootlegs, kids. And I have an official copy here. All right. No bootleg for me. And oh, you know where I got this? Where? KFJC Record Swap. Only a oh. couple swaps ago. Really? So uh, here's some information for you kids. We have another one coming up on May 18th. So uh, if you're into the slap of him junk, I've, I think I've found a slap of him record at every swap I've gone to. Really? So well, something you want to look into. I think people out there should go to the swaps. And, uh, so right now we're going to hear some of the stuff. We're going to hear Crossed Out. Uh, I think I've, I've queued up Internal, which is the first song. So, uh, let's well, hear that. Let's snap to it. Let's snap to it. What are you waiting it. for? Crossed out on KFJC. Eighty-nine point seven. Gosh, we should play several tracks instead of going on mic after every release. No, because we have to talk about every record. Yeah. Not only that, but this is you know that you have an official copy because this is the you have the version that has the fifteen second spaces yeah. between songs. Wow. Which is true. So why did that happen? Do you know? Um. Well, those guys went in to master it, and um, I guess they didn't realize until they actually got into the studio that the person they recorded with screwed up and left these really weird gaps between the songs. So they went in to master it, they found out there were these gaps there, and they decided, ah, screw it, why not? <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't really care. They, they, thought it, they thought it was kind of lame, but they didn't really want to take the time to correct it, so it just came out that way. I got the test pressing, and I'm like, hmm, there's 15 seconds between these songs. I said, well, do you want it this way? And they're like, ah, sure, why not? Who cares? So, added a little bit of character. It added a little bit more punch to each song as it came up. Because, it, you know... You can, it can almost fall asleep. Yeah, it's just all silence. And then you just kind of go out your business, start doing housework, and all of a sudden the next song comes on. So, <laughs> like, hey, all right. <laughs> so, it, it, it lends to the immediacy of the, of the whole release. So, so uh, right after that, you went back to your favorite band, Mm -hmm. So it would seem, doing a, another record with them so quickly, and that was Capitalist Casualties. This time, uh, your first full-length, a 12-inch and Yay. cassette. Yay. And CD. Well, did you originally press it on CD? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow, I didn't yeah. know that. It was originally I all thought, three formats. I thought Revolver did that later or something. Nope. And 8-track. And 8-track. It's not on 8-track. <laughs> I can't pull <laughs> anything You thought it, it was and on 8-track. <laughs> and micro-cassette. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
So, uh, any story behind the Capitalist LP? Mm, no. No. Okay, well, let's just uh, <laughs> step into it then. This is the first song off of that LP, Violence Junkie, I believe. Am I correct? Mm hmm. So, here's Capitalist Casualties on KFJC. <laughs> Jumping the gun there. That was Capitalist Casualty with Violence Junkies off their uh, LP line. disassembly line. Yeah. Luckily, I have the digital version here. Oldie but a goodie. So after that, uh, another band was released that uh, another, seems, another seems, unappreciated band that kind of fell yeah. through the cracks at the time, and that band was No Comment. And it's funny because all these bands like crossed out No Comment, Neanderthal. Nobody had heard of them, and now everybody yeah. is emulating them up, yeah. up the wazoo. True. Um, well, No Comment was around forever. Got it. I don't even remember offhand when uh, when their first demo came out, but it was it was late '80s. I remember getting a, a cassette copy of it and just thinking it was amazing. I'm like, oh, this some band I've never heard of who I'll never hear of again. I remember getting a flyer from LA, seeing that they were playing, and I thought that was cool, but. I just figured they're kind of one of those bands who just makes a demo and then breaks up and and nothing ever happens. But um, like a couple of years later, in fact, it was around the time when I was doing reviews at Maximum. Just all of a sudden, one day, this No Comment Seven Inch showed up. Like, oh my God, they're still around! Yes, 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 yes. And it was uh, the first Seven Inch, the Common Senseless Seven Inch. And so finally, I had an address to reach them and all that. So. I wrote him a letter saying how much I liked him and, you know, eventually wound up talking to Brent. And um, then um, at some point later on, they were, I convinced them to go in and record again. By that time, I think they'd broken up and reformed several times. And uh, then they, at the point when they were kind of going strong, I hit them up to see if they'd do a record. Actually, I originally wanted them to do an album because I was just thinking, oh man, if they could do an entire album, it would be the best record ever released, the best hardcore album ever. But, um, so they decided they were going to do the 12-inch, and then one day Andy, the singer, called me up and was really kind of meek and said, well, I hope you're not really mad at us or anything, but we only have enough songs for a 7-inch. Like, no, just record, please, <laughs> just record. So I, I was lucky enough to get them to record, and they did the downsided 7-inch. And um, if anyone were to ask me if... I had one favorite out of the entire Slap of Ham discography. That was a question here. Yeah, it would it would be hard to pick one, but um, if someone was was just forcing me within an inch of my life to pick one, I would choose a No Comment Seven Inch. Wow. So, uh, did you have any questions? Oh, me? I thought you were going to say something. <laughs> well, let's spill into the No Comment then. Um, oh, how many how many pressed? Mm, 
Um, you repressed it a couple of years ago, yeah, right? Yeah, I repressed it once. I think first pressing was 1500, all on clear. Second pressing was 1000, all on black. I believe that's all it was. So uh, right now we're going to hear uh, Dead Stare for Life, the first song off of No Comments. Seven inch. Seven inch. <laughs> on KFJC. What? Well, there's a title for it. <laughs> Downside it, okay. <laughs> On KFJC. <laughs> Eighty-nine point seven FM KFJC Dead Stare for Life there from No Comments Downsided Seven Inch. That's the extended version. Uh, with the we're extended by one second at the yeah. end. Yeah, that was a really rare. There's a there's a uh, pressing of like twelve where that song is extended by a second. There's like an extra little drum hit at the end there, <laughs> and you got one. Wow. So start, start that auction. <laughs> Evil um, and privileged monkey boy. That is that is I. <laughs> So uh, then you had another stupid idea, and you decided you'd punish yourself again mm -hmm. and do another multi-million band comp. Yeah. I, actually, after I did the first Bliarg compilation, or Blurg, as Lydia likes to call it, um, once it was finally done, I said, oh my god, I'm never, ever going to do this again. <laughs> this was such a pain in the ass. I'm never going to do it as long as I live. But then, um, I don't know, for some reason, that the bug bit me again and I, I had to do another one so I did and I was regretting it while it was coming together but once again when when it finally did fall into place um, I was really happy with it and actually the uh, the second one the, the son of Bliard compilation seven inch um, was a lot easier to put together than the first one I think because the first one had already been out and people realized oh hey if, if I if I do come up with a 15 second song this actually will come out Maybe that's why uh, the first one took so long to put together. Because people are saying, what? No, we're not going to put 50 bands on a 7-inch. That's stupid. That's not going to work. This is, what, what slap a hand? What is this? So I think by the time the second one rolled around, people actually uh, knew that it was legit and actually made an effort to 